This is the Omo Kibish field region of southern Ethiopia. This region has produced really important evidence of early modern humans. And in fact, the first specimens that are named early modern humans by anthropologists come from just this place. So 200,000 years ago, this was a hugely important place in our evolution. The Omo River is represented here by that green stretch of trees that you see behind me. Across the river, you see some of the badlands that have formed here. Those badlands 100,000, 200,000 years ago were not very much like they are today. In the late 1960s, an international expedition organized some paleoanthropological research here in the Omo region of southern Ethiopia. That expedition included groups that were French, that were American, and a group led by Richard Leakey. Leakey came to this area, the Omo Kibish area, and explored on both sides of the Omo River looking for evidence of ancient humans. What he discovered was that the Omo Kibish sediments represented a relatively recent time phase in our evolution. We now know this is the last 200,000 years. So as he looked around and as his team explored, they found not one, but two important early modern human specimens. Omo 1 was found on the opposite side of the river from me now, the east side of the river. And it includes a very large representation of an entire human skeleton, uh, parts from many different parts of the anatomy, and many fragments of a skull. The Omo 2 specimen was found on this side of the river, the west side, and it has most of a brain case of an early modern human skull. These specimens are not identical to your skull or my skull or really most of the skulls living today, but they have many features that are different from more archaic hominins that preceded them in time. First of all, they're relatively large. They have brain sizes that are right within the human range. Second, the brow ridges on these specimens are greatly reduced. And in particular, the lateral part, the outside of the brow ridge is greatly reduced. These are among the first specimens that don't have a really complete brow ridge going all the way to the lateral side of the frontal. They're also somewhat more rounded, although this is an area in which the two specimens are somewhat different. Omo 1, which is fragmentary, has been reconstructed and it looks like it had a slightly more rounded forehead, a little bit higher cranial shape. The Omo 2 specimen had a relatively flat forehead, but that forehead was nevertheless relatively large. And the maximum width of the skulls is relatively high on the Omo 2 specimen and in reconstruction in the Omo 1 specimen. So we're looking at skulls that share many interesting derived features with people that live all around the world today. And these are the earliest specimens in which that's the case. These, in anthropological terms, represent the earliest modern humans. But when we say modern humans, you may wonder, what do we really mean by modern? After all, people around the world today are enormously diverse. They behave in different ways and their lifestyles lead them to have many differences. Some of the differences that we see today are differences in anatomy. We look at people around the world and we see that they're very diverse in the shapes of their skulls, in their height, and other aspects of their biology. That diversity makes it very hard for us to look back in the past and say, what was the earliest population of modern humans? Diversity is what we see represented in the two Omo crania. And when we look across the Middle Stone Age of Africa, we see that there's a large diversity of different cranial shapes in different specimens that we find. Here, Omo 1 and 2 are nearly 200,000 years old. From further to the north and east in Ethiopia, there's a specimen from Herto that's different from either Omo 1 or 2. It expresses some of these similarities with modern humans, but different ones. When we look further south in, Af south in Africa, in Tanzania, we have a specimen from Lytoli, Lytoli 18. It has a slightly different pattern of features. It's similar with modern humans. It's slightly more recent, maybe 140,000 years old. In North Africa, we have skulls from Jebel or Hood, and those skulls also have a different set of features. Early modern human skulls and specimens generally across Africa are enormously anatomically diverse. Diversity is also a very important concept when we consider Middle Stone Age archaeology. 
Now the Middle Stone Age in Africa lasted from around 250,000 years ago, maybe a little older, up until around 50,000 or 30,000 years ago, earlier or later in different parts of Africa. That time range is enormously diverse in the kinds of tools that were made, in the ways that people used those tools, the procurement strategies that they had to get the raw materials for the tools, and the, the tools themselves. Middle Stone Age traditions are really an early area in which we see differentiation of different tool making traditions in different regions. So in North Africa, in southernmost Africa, East Africa, across Central and West Africa, there are different Middle Stone Age tool making traditions. And those traditions also alternate or change over time. People are learning and the information that's being transmitted from person to person is cultural. The depth of that information, the way that that information is building in human societies in Africa during this time, means that people are developing distinct traditions. They're building on what they learn around them, and what they're learning is building at a rate that cannot be dispersed so quickly across the entire continent. So we see this regionality of traditions. And of course, that's exactly what living humans are like. When we look at different parts of Africa today, different other parts of the world today, what we see is that people have different cultures. They speak different languages. They've developed different ways of making the things that they need, different ways of getting the food that they eat. Those differences today are massive. We have huge diversity of human cultures now. We can see the evidence of that diversity of human cultures emerging in the past. When we look at more ancient archaeological sites, like those that are a part of the Acheulean stone tool industry, we see relatively less diversity. People are still making different kinds of tools, and they're still using different raw materials in different places, and using a slightly different mode of production of tools in different places. But the major tools that you see, tools like a hand axe, are relatively constant across the entire range of Africa, Western Eurasia. That constancy across space is something that is breaking down during the Middle Stone Age. So Africa has become a diverse place in terms of information, in terms of culture, by the time that modern humans are arising in the last 200,000 years. Well, I have to say, it has been really exciting for me to come to southern Ethiopia and, and see these sites for myself. And I'm sure that looking at the way that this evidence is emerging, and seeing where it's coming from, will also give you a new perspective on what it means to be a modern human.